is particularly uh, relevant to, to me, but I think also maybe relevant to something that I talk about a lot on the Limitless Mindset channel. And so you were talking about the nitric oxide and then you were referencing a animal study. And you said the study showed that testosterone was significantly decreased in the group that received nicotine alone, but in the group that received nicotine as well as the nitric oxide inhibitor, testosterone levels were significantly higher. In other words, elevated nitric oxide stimulated by the nicotine decreased testosterone levels. By taking a nitric oxide inhibitor in addition to the nicotine, testosterone levels were maintained. And so I'm trying to, I use nicotine cyclically. I go on the stuff and off of the stuff. And so I was, I read that like four times trying to, trying to figure out, because I think the animal study came to the, indicated that the, that taking the nicotine, uh, resulted in some decreased testosterone levels, which would kind of, that would like confirm the thing that you always see on uh, on cigarette package in different countries on cigarette packages. They show this little, this silly little picture on the back of the cigarette package to try to dissuade people from oh, smoking yeah. cigarettes. Nasty photos there. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and a lot of times one of the things is it says that the smoking cigarettes will, uh, make your boners not so awesome dudes. Uh, and so, so the, so, so the, this study was confirming that, um, which was, that was a little bit troubling to me that partially motivated me to, uh, go off of nicotine for, I don't know, at least a month here. Um, but it, then it says that the nitric oxide inhibitor, uh, basically washed out that negative effect of the nicotine. And I do, I do like nicotine itself as a smart drug, as a creativity drug. So did your, is your research basically indicating that it's pretty, that uh, for a guy that wants to have optimal testosterone levels, it's pretty okay to do, to use nicotine, not smoke, not vape, but uh, use nicotine in like uh, in like the gum, or use a pharmaceutical USP type solution, as long as you are using a nitric oxide inhibitor like methylene blue and caffeine on top of it. In in that case, you're kind of neutralizing the negative effect of the nicotine, if I'm understanding correctly. Yeah, I think that's what the study suggests. It's interesting you mentioned that though, because I've heard like Dr. Ray Pete is someone who I looked to, look to for information. Like one of my mentors, he's been doing this for like 40 years, looking at deriving all of his conclusions from the, the evidence, which is important, I think. And he's I heard him say that nicotine is actually a, a beneficial substance. And a lot of people talk down about, you know, cigarettes, which obviously have lots of negative effects from the, the smoke itself. But he was saying if you have pure nicotine, I think he once said in an interview that I listened to that can actually be beneficial. So I'm a bit conflicted about that, to be honest. Maybe in that study, like I'm not sure what they used for nicotine. Maybe it was like cigarette smoke, you know, uh, and that's why it induced the nitric oxide. So I haven't looked in depth at the nicotine. I've heard good things, but apparently in that study, somehow it increased nitric oxide. I'm not sure if all nicotine will do that or not. So yeah, I don't think they would have given cigarettes to the <laughs> to the rats. So hopefully they, not. <laughs> yeah, they probably used uh, they probably used a USP solution that had some type of artificial flavoring in it, so that the oh, rats yeah. would actually consume. So that the rats would actually consume the the stuff. But it, I think I'm probably going to update my articles on nicotine and my guidance on nicotine because mm. I, I do recommend it to uh, biohackers quite often. I think I will recommend 
using the methylene blue alongside nicotine, uh, at least at least to men, because that my other this is this is. Uh, going from the scientific to going from the the scientific observation to the very very personal observation, my cum taste changes whether I'm on nicotine or off of it. It gets it gets worse um, on nicotine. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, I I, <laughs> I I I mean, there's, there's I could probably uh, I don't know if there's studies on that. I don't know if there's anyone else out there even on the internet bold enough to talk about that. But uh, I found that to be consistent. So that, yeah, that makes me think that there is probably some type of interaction going on there between the nicotine and the, the sexual health. And that it's probably if someone's going to use nicotine as a performance enhancer, which it is pretty good for that, um, then they'd want to have a, then they'd want to have a really good nitric oxide inhibitor alongside, which is why I'm, uh, well, I'm going to be shopping uh, methylene blue here shortly. Yeah, that sounds like a great combination. That way you're getting the best of the nicotine, best of both worlds, and you're protected by the methylene blue. So yeah, it sounds like a nice little stack. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah. I'll put, I'll, I'll publish a, I'll put a video out about that. So you're not a fan of the L-arginine. Uh, well, from everything I've looked at into nitric oxide, uh, nit L-arginine being a precursor to it. Um, yeah. It's not something I would take. That's for sure. Um, yeah. I don't think it's conducive to long-term health. So there was a, uh, in the Better Baby book by Dave Asprey, which I finished recently, he was he was speaking rather highly of L-arginine as a fertility agent for for men and for for women that it increased uh, increased sperm count, motility, um, and that it did some good things for women also. So, do you think that maybe if you were doing L-arginine for a uh, limited amount of time um, in combination with nitric oxide inhibitors that it's probably probably okay if you were if it was a shorter term thing uh well increasing nitric oxide while taking an inhibitor of it just kind of seems counterproductive there's a really interesting study i mentioned in my book um for the audience who haven't read it yet uh out of the netherlands and the idea was they were looking at improving the study was on a number of pregnant women and they wanted to improve like the outcomes of the feed the fetus and have a healthier baby essentially so the idea was because medical personnel and the popular myth in our culture is this idea that you know nitric oxide um, increases vasodilation so that will in their theory increase the circulation to the fetus and that will improve bring in more nutrients and then create a healthier baby well it turns out that study ended in disaster and it killed a number of the babies. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that shows right there. And actually, interestingly, when they looked at what like the mechanisms behind it were, uh, it actually it restricted the blood flow. So in excess, like what they gave and administered to the pregnant women, which is actually Viagra, by the way, which is insane. They're administering Viagra to pregnant women um, because it's a nitric oxide agonist. Um, but it ended up killing the babies. And ironically, contrary to what they're told and their belief that it is a vasodilator, it constricted the vessels and it choked off the oxygen supply to the fetus. And that's how it actually killed them. So it seems to have the opposite effect of what they're looking to do. Yeah, that seems insane to give Viagra to pregnant women. I've, I've never even used Viagra. I've I've used uh, horny goat weed. I've used a couple of other of the herbal um, libido libido enhancers. But I've yeah I've I've never never used uh, Viagra. It seems yeah I I've heard too many like the what was the story about the the Colombian guy whose whose dick exploded and he he bled out something like that right? Yeah yeah. In the book I talk about that. Um... 
just to really kind of shout that one for the rooftops for all the men out there who, you know, think that's going to be beneficial. It's, it's not, I mean, it's advertised really well. It's almost like common knowledge. You, you need a boner, you take Viagra, but this stuff is dangerous. And it turns out, you know, the example I used was this man who took a couple of Viagras before his big date, with his girlfriend, and they had a great night and all that. And, you know, what sometimes happens is you wake up the next day and your erection just doesn't go away and so this man's erection like stayed for like three or four days <laughs> at first it sounds amazing right it's like permanent erection that's amazing but no this thing wouldn't end and it turns out he went to the hospital eventually telling the doctors you know like i can't get rid of this thing and it turns out like his penis was like fractured and it's just super painful and they ended up chopping it off so that Ooh. could be the result of taking Castro so side effects may include castration 